Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh are welcomed by 17,000 wildly waving youngsters in Australia's southeastern state of Victoria. The smiling royal couple warmly acknowledge a tremendous reception. Seems the receiving line wants a closer look. Spectators overflow the stadium as the small fry put on an amazing display of precision marching. From the royal box, Elizabeth watches her young subjects counter-marching left and right in a rhythmic pattern of swinging arms and flashing legs. A salute to the Queen by Australia's youth. Risking arrest and a long prison term, a determined American, Peter Grimes, woos his two stepdaughters from communism and smuggles them out of the Soviet zone of Germany. The girl's mother, Ermagard, joined her husband in helping win the girls, Evelyn 11 and Monica 14, from their grandfather, a fanatical red leader. A dangerous mission wins two converts to freedom. The man on the left is Jack Webb. He's an actor. His partner's name is Richard Breen. He's a writer. This is Hollywood, California. They work there. Here are the facts. John Allen, Time magazine correspondent, presents to Webb the original cover painting for a recent issue of Time featuring a biography of the actor. Webb will star in Dragnet, a movie soon to be filmed by Warner Brothers. He'll play a cop. The cop's name is Friday. His partner's name is... But wait for Dragnet. Tornadoes slash a path of devastation across Georgia. Macon is hardest hit by the twisters, which destroy hundreds of homes and cause damage estimated at $25 million. Trees were uprooted, cars hurled hundreds of feet, and power lines knocked out as the 100-mile-an-hour winds wove their freakish way. Disaster strikes from the skies in Georgia. The Army rolls out its newest and biggest cargo carrier, the Bark, a 60-ton giant that's at home on land or in the water. It's almost 62 feet long and 18 feet high, and man, does he look small. The bark can roll over soft sand or sharp coral with loads up to 100 tons in carrying out ship-to-shore operations. Here a bulldozer follows a giant crane into the all-purpose carrier whose water speed is 7 miles an hour. Troops, too, are transported by this versatile vehicle. 200 GIs in full pack can be squeezed aboard. The bark is the biggest thing in amphibious warfare. Putting their best pictures forward, members of the White House News Photographers Association hold their 11th annual photo exhibit. Chief Justice Earl Warren, who opens the show, admires faces to remember the presidential class prize winner, matched smiles, and Ike's favorite of grandson David, morning grants. Another entry, you're looking well, Mr. President, shows Helen Keller with Ike. The Chief Justice has a special interest in family smiles. In the sports competition, the first place winner is a knockout. Pardon my glove. Bug Eye speaks for itself, as does the grand prize winner of General Vandenberg, just tired. Crowds fill the streets of Rio de Janeiro, gay capital of Brazil, for the South American City Annual Carnival, a festival of merriment and dancing in the streets. Tonight, visitors from many nations join in the fun-making. Among them are movie stars Jeanette MacDonald and Jean Raymond, as well as glamorous Irene Dunn. Here's Walter Pidgeon. Lots of clowning and hoopla, plenty of dancing for the visitors, including film star Fred McMurray and thousands of others, celebrating the festival in romantic old Rio. Millions of starlings wage a new aerial battle over Britain over the little town of Lanavet in Cornwall, where their raucous cries have the same effect on the population as the air raid sirens of World War II. A sprawling plantation of bamboo canes is threatened by the invaders who have already caused heavy destruction. To drive them away, farmers start a counter-offensive. The birds beat a strategic retreat, but not without a parting shot. A farm town fights to keep from being strictly for the birds. From fashion-conscious Paris comes a brand new style, 
No, this isn't an ocean-hopping insect, only a whimsical mask, which in Paris, we're told, the girls are wearing after dark to give the mysterious allure. Flowers become a mask for a mask. An artist, Fernand Aubry, is uh, credited with creating this new style. Ostrich and stork feathers are used extensively in creating the masks, which take many shapes. But underneath, well, seems they're still only people. The finals of the National Invitation Tournament at Madison Square Garden pits Holy Cross with the ball against Duquesne. Joe Perry tries a long set shot. The sellout crowd sees the underdog Crusaders race off to an early lead as Don Prohovich scores. Iron Dukes bounce back with Cy Green hitting. But there's no stopping the fired up Crusaders who lead 34 to 29 at the half. Tom Heinzone playing the game of his life spins free to pump in another Holy Cross basket. Duquesne rooters are glum as the New Englanders out hustle, out maneuver, and out shoot their team. In slow motion, here's that man Heinzone again driving in for a score. a storm from behind, Duquesne has Winograd toss up a side set shot. Holy Cross chokes off the rally. Leading the Crusaders on a fast break, the sharp-eyed Heinzon bounces a bullseye pass to Walt Sopranowitz, who scores. And Holy Cross dumps Duquesne 71-62 to capture their first NIT championship. 